We're now joined by Dr. Marianne Fuchs, president of the American Organization for Nursing Leadership. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you so much for having me today. Describe your organization and why it's so important, particularly for our frontline healthcare workers. So the American Organization for Nursing Leadership is the nursing arm of the American Hospital Association. And we have as our core mission to really enhance healthcare through innovative and expert nursing leadership. And we represent over 10,000 nursing leaders across the country and 44 affiliate organizations across the states, uh, providing expertise in education, advocacy, and community. And so from a nursing perspective, all nurses are leaders, we believe that, and, uh, and AONL provides those resources and support for those nursing leaders. In the age of COVID, does nurse, how significantly different does nursing or nurse leadership look? Well, I'll tell you, um, nurse, nursing leaders have had some challenges uh, during this time. And uh, however, I would say our core principles are always the same. We're here to advocate for patients. We're here to advocate for our staff, making sure that we provide the absolute highest quality care, uh, no matter what situation, and making sure that the environment for our nurses to practice is a safe one and one that is fulfilling. So at a core, that stays the same. Now, COVID provided us some different challenges and continue to provide us uh, challenges. We've actually uh, surveyed our nurse leaders from across the country uh, with Jocelyn Marketing, which we were so lucky to be able to work with. And we got responses, both quantitative and qualitative responses from over 1,800 nurse leaders from across the country about their challenges, their concerns, and their readiness moving forward. And I would say that uh, the top challenges um, were really being able to effectively communicate constantly changing information uh, when we learn and continue to learn about COVID-19, the virus, and how we have to change uh, 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 due to different uh, changing standards across the country. Uh, second, really being able to provide adequate staffing uh, because these patients and the patients that we cared for were so sick and required so many extra procedures. And third, really having the appropriate equipment and supplies, um, adequate personal protection equipment or PPE, still to a certain extent is a challenge in the country. And now what we're really finding um, through this process is just the ability to provide support to our staff during this really draining and tiring time. It's a constant challenge. So those are some of the leadership challenges that we've had as nurse leaders. You, you know, it's interesting. One of the areas that I've been struck by, and I want you to talk about this, is this whole question of um, emotional and mental health, um, burnout, can I put them all together? To what degree do we, non-clinicians, even begin to understand the mental and emotional drain and strain on nurse leaders? Well, uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's a great question. Well, yeah. how, how, it, 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 there's real burnout. How the heck do we avoid it? And I just want, I, I just know that it's got to be really difficult for nurses. And it's one thing to, 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 to applaud and, and say they're heroes. It's another thing to try to really understand and empathize. I'm sorry, go ahead, doctor. No, that's, that's okay. It, it, um, the entire COVID-19 challenge uh, or um, uh, situation has really provided some consistent challenge. Obviously, what we're seeing and what we're learning are new ways and better ways to take care of patients. Early on, we didn't understand how to treat. We're learning much more about those treatments now and are effectively caring for uh, people uh, and providing better outcomes. But our nursing teams, including the leaders, have seen more death and they've had to manage situations uh, that they've never really seen before at a rapid intensity of uh, illness. And you know, during this process, um, our staff and nurse leaders have had to act as the surrogate families for patients. Uh, because of the contagious, um, the contagious disease, families weren't uh, able to visit. And often our staff 
really had to act as the, the family and being able to communicate with the family, be there to hold the patient's hand uh, and provide the expert care. And that was really draining. On top of that, just wearing the uh, personal protective equipment all the time while they're in their, um, in their in providing patient care is also very, very challenging. The equipment uh, is uh, very difficult uh, to manage. Uh, it is difficult to wear. For example, a mask for 12 hours uh, can be uh, really uh, excruciating as it comes to being able to um, effectively breathe, uh, uh, sweat, all those physical types of things. And so that provided additional uh, challenge in addition. And since things were constantly changing in an environment which nurses didn't have a lot of control over to a certain extent, it made it even more difficult. And quite frankly, yeah. nursing leaders um, and, and all, uh, all of our leaders in our organizations, our health systems, our community really have the opportunity to understand that there's more distress um, that nurses are exhibiting now. There's more trauma in this situation. So understanding and being able to provide emotional support is needed making sure that our staff felt that they were in a safe environment to provide care, uh, making sure they had the equipment, the supplies uh, that were needed uh, to be able to care for patients is really important and still extremely important. Our staff are afraid that they might bring something home to their families. And uh, of course, we wanna be able to protect and provide for them as much as we possibly can. So communities uh, have surrounded our, our team members in our hospitals. Uh, our organizations have done different things to be able to support our, our, our frontline colleagues uh, in, in order to be, make them feel safe. Dr. Marianne Fuchs, president of the American Organization for Nursing Leadership. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Um, and thank you to not just to you, but all of the nursing colleagues your nursing colleagues and everything you do every day for all of us. Thank you, doctor. Well, thank you. And you know, it's been a tremendous pleasure. You know, the year 2020 was designated the year of the nurse and midwife by the World Health Organization. We never knew we'd have to serve in this fashion. We are the most trusted professionals and, uh, and we rise to the occasion. So thank you very, very much for having me today. Well said. Thank you, doctor. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, NJM Insurance Group, Valley Bank, PSCNG, Englewood Health, Johnson & Johnson, The Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, ADP, and by MD Advantage Insurance Company. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by New Jersey Monthly.